Hello, hello in UK Health Radio Land. I am Liz Larson and I'm here with my friend. Bill McKenna. Hey, Bill McKenna. And we're the team that hosts the New Life Perspectives radio show here on the UK Health Radio uh, Network and the team that created the Cogno Movement System. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that in a way that I, I don't think we've shared on this show before. But Bill shared with me a video um, from Dr. Andrew Huberman this week, and it had to do with improving your vision. It was a lot of fun to watch. Dr. Andrew Huberman has a huge podcast, uh, YouTube channel, all of that. And he talks a lot about neuroscience, ways that you can change your, your brain and your health through neurology. So, I mean, that's right up our alley. That's what we're doing every day. So it really was uh, fun for me to listen because I realized that there's a lot that we're doing with Cogno Movement that is already following along with his advice. So I thought we could share with our audience a little bit about some of the things that Dr. Huberman said, but also some of the things we're doing that not only refresh your vision, make your vision better, but refresh your brain at the same time so your eyes and your brain function better and as though they're younger. But at the same time, a lot of the things we're doing just by default make the face look younger. So it's this amazing trifecta that I think people will be very interested in knowing about. What do you have to say, Bill? Well, gosh, you know, I, um, you know, early on in my life, you know, I, I thought, hey, your vision is your vision, right? You know, if you've got 2020, you've got 2020. And typically the vision only goes in one direction. And that one direction is not good, right? If it's if anything's going to happen to your your vision, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. But I I actually experienced very early in my life that there was a relationship with your vision and how you feel. So, so I'll tell you the very first experience that I had, uh, I started skydiving, I think I was either 18 years old or 19 years old. And this is in Otay Lakes, California, which is uh, just kind of east San Diego in uh, United States here in California, because this is a global show. And this is back in the day when they had uh, this, is, I'm showing my age. You remember the World War II type of parachutes, you know, that were round? Nobody uses them anymore, but you know, they not, no, nobody uses I those. <clears throat> yeah, those big old round ones, you know, like they would use them maybe in Vietnam or something like that big green ones. And they were huge and round. You couldn't control them very good, very slow forward airspeed. So you could kind of wing yourself around to being into the wind so you could land uh, and not get hurt. Um, but I, I took my very, very first uh, jump uh, there. And after I got onto the ground, I was driving home and the area that I was in, you know, it's Chaparral. It's, it is uh, the Southwest, which is kind of dry and low shrubs and that sort of thing. But I noticed my vision had changed. I, I, <clears throat> I was kind of aghast at the clarity of my vision my vision seemed incredibly sharp and the, and the colors were extremely vivid. So I had this, this sharpness and the vividness, the colors were so vivid. The sunset was just so beautiful. And even the, the chaparral and the dirt and everything, it was like, my gosh, it sure is, you know, wow. It's like, who, who turned? It's like who who uh, who turned the uh, 
the uh, the sharpness up on the TV here. It's awesome. So that was my very first experience. But but uh, to pref to kind of go back one step, the very first time you take a, a skydiving for most people in the world, uh, you know, you have some fear of death, right? I'm going to go jump out of a perfectly good airplane. And, you know, you hear about people dying, right? You're literally jumping out of an airplane. Like, is it work? Well, a lot of people have done it. you never done it. But, you know, people have died doing this. So uh, here you go, Bill, you know. And so there was this kind of um, buildup, I'm sure, of chemicals, you know, of, of like uh, adrenaline and what have you. I noticed, though, that this, um, this phenomenon in my life would happen uh, with near-death experiences, you know, uh, being the uh, kind of adventure kind of uh, seeking person that I was, when there would be uh, a near-death type experience, uh, this clarity uh, of physical vision not emotional, but actual physical vision. That actually, I should say that that you know, looking at at things that are so clear and beautiful certainly makes you feel good. But um, uh, this phenomenon uh, also later on, after the uh, the discovery of cogno movement, where we release trauma from the person's body. You know, we do these cognitive movement is cognitive movement, right? Two words together. We focus on it on, let's say the trauma, and we have certain um, physical things that we do with a person. It's an exercise and they experience releasing a horrible traumas from their life, grief, guilt, resentment, anger, blame, uh, cravings, addictions, you know, all kinds of things literally just exit where they don't feel it anymore. Well, one of the phenomenons that I noticed for myself first was I would release something that was a burdensome for, you know, my whole life. And then poof, you know, there's a sensation that you have in your body and it ends up leaving and you no longer emotionally feel that way anymore. I noticed the exact same visual phenomenon happening. I would look outside and I was like, oh my gosh, why are the, why are the trees so beautiful? What, what happened? It's so green, so beautiful. And I, uh, I ended up kind of relying on this also with my clientele. I would have them prior to a session, look outside. I just want you to look, just look at, look at what you see. That's it, just look at, outside. And then after the session was done, I would have them to look outside again. And I, I would ask, is, uh, is there any difference? And, and inevitably, they all had the exact same thing, which is, oh, my God, it's so sharp. It's so clear. It's like so beautiful. I don't know how that happened. You know, Did this, I guess the sun must have come out. You know, some people people say stuff like that or, you know, whatever. But anyway, Liz, I, I, I uh, you know, I'm, I, I love the whole thing today of um, uh, this stimulated by uh, Dr. Andrew Huberman. He is out of Stanford, by the way. He's a, a neurological researcher, which really is wonderful for us. We want to have him on the show because, you know, he really aligns with our work. That's with what we do. What's so true, and, and everything you said is true. I've experienced it myself. The first time I experienced what, what the first time I remember experiencing what Bill's talking about is after a cognoconscious seminar, which I guess I'll tell you guys about that at the end. It's coming up here pretty soon. But at the end of that seminar, so everything looked different to me, not just the brightness and the contrast and the colors. That did too. 
but there was this way of looking at the world. So we have our vision that we're talking about, and then we have our inner vision as well. I mean, how things, how we perceive. And I literally was looking around saying, is this what the world really is? It was like somebody peeled away a layer and I could see it for the first time. It was fantastic. Now, I know everybody's saying, well, does it last? Yeah, it really does, but it becomes your new normal so fast. <laughs> it's like whiplash. You know, by the next day, it's integrated into your system and you forgot that the world was like any other way. So today, I want to strip it back, though, to three places, really your vision, your actual, you know, do you have 2020 or 2030? The second place is the brain, what it, what it does to your brain. And the third really is at how it makes you look younger. So there's some really basic stuff that we, we do with Cogno Movement. We access what some people would refer to as a subconscious through two ways, the eyes and the body, sensation in the body. So there's me, these movements we use in Cogno Movement with the eyes that have this funny side effect of making your vision better. And there's really, really good reason for it. And that goes back to what Dr. Huberman was talking about. We use some kind of extreme eye movements where we're really stretching the eyes, you know, all the way left. So I'm gonna challenge everybody in the audience today. Move your eyes all the way to the right like you're trying to see your ear. You might even pull your ear forward a little bit, see if you can look at it and notice what that feels like. Move your eyes all the way left, like you're looking at the other ear. See if you can see it, you can't by the way. And notice what that feels like to stretch your eyes that far. Then- Don't do this while driving. Yeah, don't do it while driving. And then move your eyes all the way up, like you're trying to look at your own eyebrows and notice that one's gonna be sore for most people. And then move your eyes all the way down like you're trying to see your chin. Notice, was there some discomfort there? For most people, the answer is going to be yes, because we don't move our eyes like that. We just don't. If you look at a little kid, if anybody's seen a little kid under five lately, notice what their eyes are doing. I mean, their eyes are googly all over in their head. <laughs> they're looking here, they're looking there, they're all around. But what most of us don't realize is they're accessing all the areas of their brain. This eye movement is so important to the growth and development of the brain because they're accessing the files of their brain through their eyes. So as they learn, the eye movement places the memory or the learning in different parts of the brain, which is so fantastic because later on in life, when we're trying to do things like remove trauma, like Bill's talking about, we can reaccess that part of the brain through the eyes. Okay, so I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole because it's fascinating too, but really your eyes just start, stop moving in these really the extreme places as you get older. And because of that, you literally stop accessing those parts of your brain as you get older. So not only does your vision start to decrease, but so does your ability, your, your vision, vision, your inner vision. So does your ability to see new perspectives. So the old adage that it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks has a lot to do with how your eyes are moving, where they're moving, and what part of the brain is being accessed. So with cogno movement, this is a part of it anyway. It's just a default of what we do is moving the eyes in these extreme locations. And because of that, a few things happen. You, your vision improves. I'll, we'll share about more about how that happens in a few minutes. Your brain improves, you get smarter. It's like somebody power washed your brain. <laughs> 
and you look younger. So we need to take a quick break. And in the next segment, we'll actually break that down. Why that's actually happening. What's the function of it and how you can actually do some of it now. So let's hear from the UK Health Radio. UK Health Radio, take it away. Okay, so we're back. And when we really said a mouthful, I can see Bill's dying to jump in. What do you have to say, Bill? Oh, gosh. So what Liz was uh, talking about a minute ago, it becomes uh, kind of uh, obvious once you understand a couple of new things. So actually, I learned from Dr. Andrew Huberman out of Stanford that the eyes, the brain, and the spinal cord neurologically are considered one system. So the importance of that is that if there is something going on, let's just say um, I don't like somebody, I don't like a situation, I'm very fixed in, in rigid belief. My political party is the best and yours is terrible. Uh, the, the people in this part of the world are horrible and we're good or vice versa. You know, you name it from, from uh, problems in your house to global issues is what I'm, what I'm talking about. What'll happen is part of your brain uh, will have limited function and your neurological system as well, meaning that, that whole spinal cord. When this happens, what happens is the eyes and many other things, but the eyes, as she was saying, their periphery vision begins to shut down. Remember the eyes and the brain and the spinal cord are one. So if part of my brain is shut down, so too are my eyes. But, but the flip side of this pancake, if you will, is that the eyes can affect the brain and the spinal cord. So you can, and this is one of the things, one of the many things that we do with cognitive movement is we utilize that natural neurological response that is going to uh, happen through your eyes. Another place that you really see this is with autistics, you know, kids that are on the spectrum. Oftentimes, there's so much stimulation that they need to kind of shut it down. They need to shut down all the stimulation. So their vision, they shut it down and they start telescoping, meaning they only will have a limited vision and they won't be able to look left and right very well. The um, physical life uh, reflects what's going on inside of somebody. So for example, as Liz was saying, the response to life events, right? How you have rigidity in your thinking, rigidity in your acting. I go to the same place. I eat the same food. I go to the same damn place, Satan, same everything, right? Routine, rote, you know, say the same things, you know, as old people start repeating the same thing, right? So, so what's happened, if you look at them, they won't be moving much with those eyes. The flip side of it is that you can create vibrancy. You can do it. And yet with these simple exercises, all of a sudden, all the vibrancy starts coming back, new thoughts, new ideas, new, all kinds of dynamic stuff. And I love it when people are in their 80s and I work with them and all of a sudden it's like they have completely, completely changed. They are on it. You know, they're, they're having a great time. Life's possibilities have all opened up. Liz, please. Yeah. I mean, we've seen this again and again, and, and you're right, Bill, when we work with somebody, you know, really in their late seventies or eighties, and we've worked with many now 
when we meet up with them, you can see that the eyes are not moving correctly and they're not moving far. I mean, they're looking about, you know, as though they were just right to one corner of the head and white to one other corner of the head. And sometimes their eyes are not tracking. We can actually see even if there's a brain injury with the way the eyes are tracking, but more than anything, it's just this rigidity that you're talking about. And there's actually another layer of that. As we get older, and this is really a function of the nervous system, just keeping us safe. Like you said, we go to the same places, we say the same things. All of that didn't kill us yesterday. So the nervous system is gonna keep us in that pattern for today. So what also happens is a person will get stuck in one part of their brain. That repetitive pattern will be that they're either on the left or the right generally, and they're stuck in one and they don't have access to the other. And you'll see it in the, in the things they talk about, the things they want to talk about and that repetitive nature. And, you know, that repeating things happens sooner than later. <laughs> yeah. It's, we'll see it. And it's kind of fun and interesting. We'll have a person telling us about this big problem in their life. And you notice that their eyes are only moving on one side of the head. I think I've told the story before of a guy who was a, a, a creative person. He was a, a web designer, website designer. And anytime anyone would ask him to wing it, to get creative, he would freak out, like literally go into shock and anxiety. And all it was that his eyes were stuck in the position that only accessed his left brain. He was only in the linear. All we had to do was get the eyes moved to the other side, get the right brain involved. <laughs> and his creativity went crazy. So, and he is a young man. So it can happen to us for many, many, many reasons. But if you find yourself stuck, and so many people talk about being stuck, don't they, Bill? Oh, yeah. Moving your eyes can be the answer. It's that can be that simple. So you can see where you really do uh, get stuck, where our perspectives and our perceptions start to get limited, limited, limited. So let's share with everybody one thing you can do right now, as long as you're not driving. And it's this, move your eyes in a circular pattern in extremes, all the way across the floor, all the way up the right side of your room, literally keeping your head forward. If the eyes don't hurt a little bit, you're not doing it right. <laughs> they really will stretch, it's, it's uncomfortable. All the way across the ceiling and all the way back down the left. Do this five or six times very, very slowly and you'll start to notice things break up a little bit. So you'll also start to notice that your thoughts are almost immediately different because now you're using more than one part of your brain. And with Cogno movement, that's one of the first things we do. We use this funny ball that accesses the left part of the brain through color, complex symbol, and the right through 3D and touch. So, but just moving your eyes alone can get that left and right side of the brain involved, which in, improves your perspective, but it actually makes you smarter because you got more brain, <laughs> right? Um. Yeah, accessing more of your brain. You know, I had a, um, a neurologist type researcher who, who gave me this one, right? It sounds so simple. And they said, you know, just tell your story of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Roll your eyes all the way around your head very, very slowly and just keep telling the story and rolling the eyes around in the head. You just keep telling the story and rolling the eyes. And and uh, many, many years ago, I remember uh, doing this and, um, and 
after I did it, I was here. This is the strangest thing. Uh, and I say this because you're going, if you do this exercise, I give you a little warning ahead of time of what's going to happen. The, what Liz was just talking about with this eye movement is remember going back to basics, the eyes are connected to the brain. So if I'm moving the eyes all the way around, I'm accessing different parts of my brain and I'm connecting uh, profitable connections and I'm also pruning unprofitable connections or unuseful. Well, after I did this, uh, this whole thing, I started getting new perceptions uh, because I was literally using more of my brain. The strangest thing was we were driving here uh, to get on the freeway. And as I was getting uh, going on the freeway, mind you, I've lived in the same basic area for, I don't know, 25 years or more. And I look across the street and I, I, and I see a, uh, a mini market. It's called 7-Eleven here in the United States, but it's, it's, a, um, it's like a mini market gas station. And as I look across, I'm like, oh my God, how long has that um, service station, that gas station mini market been there? And my wife says, it's been there all our lives. And, I, and I I'm looking at it and it clearly, the building structure is old and, and clearly it's been there a long time. That's why I was so shocked. I would have bet $1 million that that was a Nissan uh, motor car uh, a dealership. I, I swore, I would, I would swear, you know, and bet money that that was it. But there, once I started utilizing more of my brain, I literally, not figuratively, literally a building popped up. I'm like, oh my God, it's, it, wow, how did that happen? I've never seen it. And to this day, this type of phenomenon uh, continues to happen as I, I get, uh, I notice every time I create more neurological connections in my brain, I see more things in the physical world. It's the strangest darn thing. Yeah, I just want to jump in and say, but this is, I think, a new conversation about vision, because we're not just talking about the function of your eyes and where you have 20, 20 or 20, 30, but literally what you have the capacity to see, right. right? It reminds me of the story of when the um, Aztecs, I think, first saw the ships and they couldn't see them. You know, the conquistadors, they couldn't see the ship because they'd never seen anything like it. They had no context yes. for it. It took them some time yeah. to functionally, literally be able to see it. So this is what's so interesting in well, our work. I, but hold on, tell the rest of that story it was the shaman of the, of the uh, Aztecs that could see the ship. He could see a different reality because he had an expanded awareness. But the, but the other Indians, right, the other Aztecs literally couldn't even see it uh, at that time. Yeah, so, isn't that incredible? It's, yeah. So those of us who do this work, and I have to tell you, I do this part daily, you know, for, for, the, for the vision, yes. But the ideas that come, I want to be able to see everything that I can see. And I mean, literally and figuratively, I want to be able to see beyond what everybody else is seeing, seeing daily. That's my mot motivation. And that's what happens. So spoiler alert, alert at the end, I'm going to share with you about cognoconscious because this actually jumps your consciousness, the things that become available to you simply by being able to expand your eyes and your brain in this way, change what is available to you <laughs> on the planet. But we won't go there quite yet. Um, 
I want to share with everybody the function of how this actually improves your, your eye vision, your real vision, and why it makes you look younger. So let's take a break. We'll hear from UK Health Radio. And when we come back, I'll give you that information. You guys are really going to like this. So UK Health Radio, take it away. So we're back. And I, I promised I'd share about how it improves your vision and uh, why it makes you look younger. But I, there's something else I want to say before I forget. There's, there's something else that you can access through your eyes. And it really is your emotions. So we use it to access the, the physical emotion of the body to neutralize that emotion and to move that emotion into a higher state simply through how we move our eyes. And we, when we're teaching practitioner training, we actually teach practitioners to use this one thing. You guys can do it too. So think of something that's bothering you a little bit right now and let your eyes look down. Like you're looking through your shirt, like all the way down and think of something and notice how it feels. Like notice the sensation in your body. Like notice if it feels yucky. Like how do you know you don't like this thing, right? There's a feeling. And then just slowly start to track your eyes upward. Very, very slowly. Move the eyes up. Like you're going to maybe look, start to look from the, the floor, up the wall in front of you. Until your eyes are straight and level. And now it's straight and level. Let your eyes kind of reach into the room. Kind of reach out there and still bring this thing that's bothering you to mind. Notice if it's a little bit less bothering you. Move your eyes gently left and right at that same like straight ahead plane. And think about this thing. Now gently track your eyes very, very, very slowly up to where you're looking almost up above your head and think about this thing. And notice, has it somehow strangely changed in how you feel? <laughs> so the body has the way, the brain has the way of act, accessing these emotions through eye movement in the eyes down position. You're actually connecting with your emotions, your physical body. Think about how you know if somebody's sad, their eyes are down. Straight ahead, things flat, neutralize out. Think about what it looks like when somebody's zoning out, spaced out. <laughs> Usually they have their mouth hanging open. You can kind of tell. And think about what happens when somebody's thinking. Or in praise, or if they win, eyes automatically go up. So it's one more layer of how you can actually change what's happening in your body and in your emotions and in your mind through your eyes. So do you wanna to add to that before I share the function of youth and vision, Bill? I, the only thing I can say is, is that um, I have also seen uh, the relief of unprocessed grief uh, that it has a lot to do with vision. When you process the grief, the, the vision seems to be positively impacted. So um, if you ask yourself uh, the question, right, if you've had your eyes sight, you know, seems to be getting blurry or, you know, worse, has, has anything happened, you know, that maybe you know you felt some grief around but but you you know your average person is like you know what i gotta go to work i got things to do i got babies to take care of i got uh, i got responsibilities and i have no time for this you know grief and, and this hardship you know you're pull yourself up by your bootstraps type person and move on well um, my point of bringing this up is that maybe, maybe taking a little bit of time to acknowledge that grief and to process that grief. Now, uh, you know, that requires, you know, the, 
uh, you actually doing something to move this grief out of the body, which cognitive movement does that. But um, I just wanted to, you know, give another kind of a, a tip to, as to something to consider. Well, it's really true. The things that are going on in our emotional lives, which are really physical. How do we know we have an emotion? We can feel it. That's how. And then the thought cycle around it. But, you know, Bill has had the experience of, of actually working with somebody who was blind because of a trauma. So this goes from restoring that person's blindness through the whole gamut of visual issues, one eye working, one eye not working, um, changing which eye is dominant, all the way up to just improving vision, you know, having a, a refresher and making the eyes feel younger. So there's that gamut of possibility that's available through this kind of work. So I promised I'd share the function. So your eyes, people maybe don't realize this, but all around your eyes in your socket are muscles. And those muscles contract and release. So squint and notice what your eyes do. Notice the muscles. They, they activate. And what the function of squinting does is it actually gently puts pressure on your eye to make the lens focus a little bit more. So when we don't move our eyes all the way around, when we don't exercise those muscles, they get flabby and loose, just like everything else. So, and they don't get the oxygen um, and the nutrients either when we don't exercise them. So when you stretch your eyes in these extreme positions, you get oxygen, blood flows because you're, you're stressing that a little bit and you're tonifying the muscle. So because of that, the eyes are more reactive and it will gently squeeze the eye to make it focus better. So ta-da, vision is improved. Now the more vain function is everything tightens up in the eye socket. The muscles around the eyes tighten. And so a person looks younger. So this is one of the things when Bill and I first started doing cognitive movement seminars, we would notice that at the end of the seminar, a person would look five, 10 years younger. One thing that was happening was that the body had restored the energy back to the skin and the muscles and the, the light in the eyes had turned back on. Skin had begotten, started to get plumper. That's just a function of when trauma is released, the body has more energy. You look more vital. But bigger than that, well, really not bigger than that. Also, the eyes had gotten a lot of oxygen and had been refreshed and plumped up. So right around that, that, that place, a person looked better and they report their eyesight actually being better. So when you do this on a regular basis, like a lot of cognitive movement um, users are doing, you know, that daily five minutes to get the ideas and inspiration going, to get both sides of your brain functioning and back in the game, you naturally have more and more tonified muscles around the eyes. And so vision um, is better and you look younger. So that's, that's the function. That is awesome. Isn't that great? Yeah, that is great. It, um, <clears throat> and you know, when your vision sharpens, you're going to find yourself with more energy. People literally, you get tired when you're struggling to focus. If you find yourself struggling, you're tired. There's, a, there's an interesting phenomenon that can wake you up. And this one is, is just as simple as raising up your eyebrows and looking up a little bit, just a little bit, 45 degrees up, but raise your eyebrows. 
raise your eyebrows, your forehead up, and watch. You're, there's somebody in the world right now who's listening to this who's a little bit fatigued. Just raise up, like furrow your eye, your forehead, raising up your eyebrows and looking up a little bit. If you just do this for maybe, who knows, maybe a minute or so, you're going to find it's like, oh my gosh, I just drank two cups of coffee. I'm fine. I can keep going. You know that feeling where you're, when you do get tired, that the eyes get heavy. They literally feel your eyelids are like, oh, my eyelids are heavy. Well, just do this and literally neurologically in your brain, it'll wake you up. It really affects your brain. Well, that position is a really good one. If you want some ideas and inspiration as well, the eyes in that up position connect with the part of the brain that has the ability to have ideas and inspiration. So this is one I use a lot. You know, you just move the eyes in that up, same up position that Bill's talking about and kind of move them left and right across the ceiling. Layer on some breath. If you guys are doing this and you'll layer on on a deep breath, you'll get that extra oxygen to the part of the body that you're stressing just a little. That's how it works. So, you know, layer that on. You will feel refreshed. You're going to exercise yours, but you're actually accessing ideas and inspiration. The other thing is if you've forgotten something, you're trying to find a word or remember something. Lots of times if you roll your eyes upward and then try to remember it, you'll access it very, very quickly. It's, that's a, a really good old trick, but it just feels good. And we don't do it. When, when Bill and I work with people in person, it's the one thing that we notice. People who are in fight or flight, in grief, you know, in a, a, a trauma in their body all the time, or have a head injury or who are older, their eyes don't want to move up not above that neutral state. They, they don't want to move into that up position. It's very uncomfortable. And you'll notice that there's a pulling, you know, the eyes will dry out. They'll want to close. They feel heavy. They just don't want to go there. So we know when we see that, that there's this huge capacity for change in just getting their eyes to move into that up position. Now imagine if you're one of these people, try rolling your eyes up now. If they don't want to go, we're talking to you. Notice that stretch. If you do not have the ability to access ideas and inspiration in your own body, you're not going to feel inspired or creative or motivated. This could be a huge answer to you if you're stuck that your eyes just simply functionally do not want to move. And you can use this to start to get yourself unstuck. In Cogno movement, we focus on this eye movement, how the eyes move, how the eyes track, how they feel, where they stretch, but also the corresponding sensation in the body. Not really the emotion, you can use that too, but a corresponding physical sensation. And if you know how to do this, if you have the trick, you can actually functionally change the way that pattern is running in your body, the way you feel about it, the way you think about it, how things look on the planet, <laughs> how your vision's working internally and externally, and how you look. So we're at the end, Bill. This went so fast. This was a fun conversation. But there's something I want to share with everybody. I, we mentioned consciousness. So what do we mean by that? We mean that um, literally the availability, the awareness of you have that you have of the world around you, the insight that you have into yourself and to you know how the universe works, all adds into this consciousness. And like I said, you know, the first cogno conscious that we did my awareness jumped exponentially and so did everyone else at that conference. The world looked different. How we perceived our lives were different. So 
this is available. It's available to everyone if they want it. And in September, this coming September, Bill and I are putting on uh, the Cogno Conscious Seminar. We've um, learned to do it once a year. It's our biggest event. And I want to tell you guys, it's hard. It's hard. We move all the way through the levels of consciousness from shame, grief, anger, fear, acceptance, joy, peace, all the way up to enlightenment. We clear on them and we experience them. We actually change the patterns in the body around them. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I want you to come to our website, cognomovement.com forward slash Gaia, G-A-I-A. And there's an hour long video there, Bill, explaining consciousness and the levels of consciousness. And you'll recognize immediately where you are, how your life is functioning. When you change your consciousness, lots becomes available. You know, sometimes even psychic abilities, manifestations. But more than that, how your life works changes. It just gets easier. So cognomovement.com forward slash Gaia, G-A-I-A. Watch that video. Learn a little bit more about what's possible. And then start in the process of being eligible to come to that Cogno Conscious Seminar in September. You have to learn our system. You have to become part of the community. But there's time for you to do that. And at the end of a Cogno Conscious Seminar, no one who ever has attended leaves as the same person. You're physically, functionally, consciously different. This um, process that you go through in September, uh, if you decide that it's something that you want to do, uh, will fundamentally change your life. And that, uh, that little hour talk that you, uh, that video will uh, really assist you with understanding how that works. So I just suggest take a look at that. It's free. And, um, and you see if uh, you want to move to the next level. All right. Yeah. I mean, we know that, that changing your consciousness is not for everyone, but it's for more and more people on the planet today. And, and what Bill and I help a person do is change that physically. We're changing who you are at a physical level in your body and it changes who you are on a spiritual level as well. It's massive. So we'd love to see you in San Diego. San Diego is beautiful. And you get to meet us in person. And from now until September, we'll probably be talking about this a little bit more and more. Um, you'll learn more and more about it uh, through the radio show. But Bill, we are out of time. Okay. So we, we got to go. If you try some of these eye exercises, reach out to us. Let us know what happens. Info at cognomovement.com. You can uh, share things with Bill and I, ask us questions, um, and tell us what happens to you by using this. Thank you. All right, guys. See y'all next week. Thanks for being here with us on the New Life Perspective radio show. For more information or to find out more about the work that Bill and I do, please visit us at cognomovement.com or email us at info at cognomovement.com. See you again soon.